a lot of people have preconceived notions about me that I'm this crazy and all this stuff like that. And I make videos about people. Here's the thing. I don't, in case you guys haven't noticed, I don't make videos about people who don't. I make videos about me and my journey and my struggles. All I said was like, yeah, like watching that, I could be like, oh, that girl seems crazy. F you, Anthony, but I don't care if this gets demonetized. F you. You're on YouTube. Guess what? People are entitled to say whatever the f they want about your video. It's called freedom of speech. You put something out there, get ready to be criticized, baby. You put something out there, get ready to be criticized, baby. You put something out there, get ready to be criticized, baby. Christmas, happy holidays, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Trisha Paytas Files. And it's just in time for the holidays. Trisha, Trisha, Trisha. Let me grab this here for you. So it's important that I give you this. Trisha, if you're watching this, this is for you. Okay, I'm gonna open this little guy up. Oh God, my fingers are too fat. Oh, look at that. Wow. Oh my goodness, it's actual. It's real coal. This is what you've always wanted, Trisha. It's coal. This is your Christmas gift from me to you. Before we begin any further, special thanks to our brand new sponsor of the channel today. Santa is about to get litty this next week. If you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Of course you do. What you're looking at here is Vance Global Delta 8 gummies. They are 50 milligrams each, a total of eight, and they are absolutely delicious. And boy, do they work. And I'm gonna have to eat a couple of these throughout the whole rest of this video just to get through it. Cause it's one of those videos, you know? Vance Global also sells their organic hemp cigarettes. There are a total of three different types of CBD, 50 milligrams of Delta HTAC combined with CBD. So maybe you don't wanna get that extra zing zing that comes with, you know, Delta HTAC. You can settle for a CBD product instead. And boy, do these actually work. They feel extremely smooth, but most of all, these are relaxing and tasty. And it's legal to sell Delta HTHC to all 50 states in America. If you use my discount code vanceglobal.com and use discount code REPSION, you're gonna get 20% off your order for a pack of those delicious gummies. And be warned, they do work very, very, very well. Hell, you know, screw cookies and milk. Santa today has a new diet, and that's Vance Global. You deal with anxiety, maybe some pain, because I got, you know, a bone chip last month. I can't be any happier working with this brand, because I've been wanting to work with a brand like this for a very, very long time, and now I finally can promote a product that I am now using regularly myself that helps me into my day-to-day -day life that could possibly, potentially help you too. Support the channel, click the link. So I'm gonna try to approach this in the most non-biased way that I can, because for full transparency's sake, I've actually collaborated with Trisha Paytas before. Why do you do it? Why are you such a hater? Is it to get attention, huh? huh? Or, or to get more views for those silly videos? It's, it's intended to be satire. Satire? <laughs> Do you even know what satire is? She contacted me over five years ago, invited me to be in one of her short films called Viral Video. I play a character by the name of Tanner, who's supposed to be her number one hater on the internet. Because for those of you who don't know, on this channel, back in the day, Trisha Paytas used to do a lot of troll videos. Some of these videos included, do dogs have brains? Her falling in love with Mitt Romney. Trisha made a lot of early trolling videos and they did very, very, very well with views and bringing in a lot of ad revenue before demonetization was a thing. Now, one of the things that I did, even though I knew she was a troll, is I would make video responses to her trolling videos. These videos are still on my channel, but it was all for the entertainment, the lols. So Trisha Paytas contacted me, said, hey, I want you to be this character named Tanner, who's my number one hater because you've made videos, a bunch of videos responding to me, blah, 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 blah. I said, absolutely. I flew down there, been on set for a, a two to three days, was in one of her vlogs, and it was paid. So overall, that experience and meeting her in person, 
it was fun. She was really down to earth, she was chill. But a lot of stuff has happened <laughs> since 2014 and 2015. Her channel's way larger, she's involved in way more projects, but most of all, her career is even more diverse than it was. And that's where we're gonna start today. You see, Trisha Paytas has one of the largest portfolios in the online world or the creator influence world as I've ever seen. Hands down, she tops the top of just being around every place, everywhere, on everything. The earliest thing I could find on Trisha Paytas was this actual newspaper article. Local girl meets B2K. A mutual admiration for the king of pop led to chance meeting with members of the boy band B2K for a 14-year-old resident, Trisha Paytas Center. Trisha met the band at LAC. When one of the members asked her about Michael Jackson doll she had, which she brought back from London after attending a Michael Jackson event. B2K also had returned from Europe from a tour with the girl band. Destiny's Child. The band members were also big fans of Michael Jackson. Showed Trisha some of the Michael Jackson memorabilia they had, and Trisha showed them some of the items she brought back from London. For those of you who don't know, Trisha has a lot of people she's really into. Michael Jackson, uh, Tarantino. She's been very vocal about My Chemical Romance, even using that in her most recent wedding, which, by the way, Trisha, that's good taste. Who doesn't like some emo level of uh, My Chemical Romance, you know? I know I certainly do, that was my, this is my shtick. That was my shit back in the day. Black nail polish, using a hair straightener. Do you guys remember those days? Because it was on YouTube. Trisha Paytas was on the sci-fi network. Who wants to be a superhero with Stan Lee? She was the character Miss Limelight. If a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, she's a lethal weapon. Okay, I gotta admit, that is pretty funny. She was on Ellen DeGeneres. What do you do? I read. Okay. <laughs> So do I. I mean, I read, yeah. read kind of fast. Actually, do you know what would be scarier if after putting on the one shoe, I recklessly put my foot in the other one and discovered that I was teaming with hundreds of spiders, all the babies were in there, a whole let's see, it's a cat, goose, geese, school of fish, what is a group of spiders called? Oh, no, I remember a whole circle of spiders, that'd be a scary thing ever. Three dogs get to the inside the kitchen window with an impression that's a mixture of pity and confusion. So, and this is the scary part, you're in the backyard and you just watch Joe's office, Joe's office, and funny, now, haha, but it could be weird, funny. Oh, um, he was in the dragon, the yellow suit. Uh, Bruce Lee. Yeah, no, um, oh, uh, she has a talk show host, big black lady. Uh, oh, uh, for one for No, she's not a princess, but uh, we look came yeah. out. Okay. Um, oh, um, she was a blonde bombshell in the 50s. She's. Uh, Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Um, my name is Trisha Paytas. I am 23 years old. I've never tried out before because I never liked to be the judges, but I saw him like, that's uh, my boyfriend. Uh, that's your boyfriend? I just want to look at his beauty. He's just so beautiful. <laughs> Every single summer when I turn him on TV, I'm watching HT thinking how should we be on that stage on a case my soul off of hold it. Take it seriously because I never had a challenge. Did you put stuff on your face? No. Shame, shame. But it's tan. If I take my makeup off, it will look stupid. I have a white face. Like when my mom tells me stuff about my face and like aging wrinkles, I'm not concerned about it. Why worry about something now that's not gonna happen for a long, long time? I know, but with, when you have bronzer, that takes the place of the sun, and then people don't know. I don't do anything that's harmful to my body. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. But I think everyone kind of has those little indulgences that they, you know, have. And I think tanning is just mine. So if the one unhealthy thing that I do is gonna kill me, then oh well. It's because you guys don't have to think about your skin at a young age. What if I die? Tomorrow won't matter, then will it? I know, you said you'll be happy because you're teen. Right, <laughs> I would be, it don't matter. But I'm your mom and I don't want you to die, so. Well, I'm sure I won't die from cancer. People die every day from cancer and, uh, and people die from skin cancer. Hi, I'm Trisha Paytas and I am an internet sensation with over 1 billion views. My videos are my life. I am an open book. There is definitely no subject off limit to me. It's very dangerous to know me or even talk to me because you will be talked about on my channel. She was on Dr. Phil. She was on the show The Bachelorette. She's done rapping. She's done singing. She's done music videos. She's done professional choreography dancing. Again, I have to emphasize this. Her diversity in career path of being everywhere, every place is absolutely impressive. I, I can't deny that. And I'm not gonna criticize somebody for having such a diverse, flexible career path of success because Trisha Paytas, despite the flaws, despite valid criticisms, is a very successful person. She was kind to me, I had fun working with her, but I'm not going to let that hinder my ability to make this video. But I feel like Trisha Paytas really started going kind of downhill when the internet meme of her sitting in her kitchen crying became what it is. So I'm so sorry to be making this video. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I ruined every relationship and friendship that I have and I am going to be forever alone. And 
tears and still to this day I mean I look at, at the comments on the pictures and I'm crying again this is happy tears so fuck these comments it's still like you're so ugly you're disgusting you're still a whale like all this stuff like this is embarrassing like all this stuff and constantly being told this but then at the end of the day like I said this is happy tears at the end of the day like I'm so happy and I'm doing what I love I'm sorry <laughs> I have no emotional outlets in my real life yeah I have friends and I do have family but it's really hard for me to talk about my emotions and to be really open with people he was the first person I've ever trusted in my entire life um with everything I was really vulnerable and opened up because he was the first person I've ever told like everything to I'm gonna be taking a break for a little bit off YouTube I'm not gonna sit here and comment on the dysfunctionality of her relationships and where things have went wrong, but what I do know is that with every pe person she's been in a relationship with online, it has resulted in the same sort of behavior and response in every situation. She makes a video about an ex of hers or a relationship that went wrong, and she just blasts all of this stuff to the world. Now, whether or not some of the stuff she says is true or not, that's a whole nother debate. Because Trisha, to me, has always striked me as the individual who is the girl who cries wolf, or the boy who cries wolf. She says a lot of things that are exaggerated or potentially are not true about someone making a hemorrhage of video after video after video after video about video after video after video after video after video after video of, of, of these people that she's been in relationships with. And as somebody who's been online for the over the last 10 years, I'm really against people who make videos on their exes repetitively. I don't care if somebody makes a video about their past relationship or issues with them. I, I, I mean, recently I've done it myself, but that's one video in like 10 years. You know, I'm not every time I have a relationship, I'm not talking about that relationship and blasting out personal details. There's a lot of creators, not just Trisha, who has done this type of thing. And it's a really big red flag to me anytime a creator does this. I don't think it's healthy. I think it's damaging specifically because if you've noticed, the people in the exes that she's chosen to blast publicly, almost all of them don't want to have any public association with her after this has happened. Because she has, when you have millions and millions of subscribers and followers, and you're blasting out, you know, personal information that may or may not be true on somebody, constantly, again, this is not a one-time thing, not a two, not a three, not a four, this is repetitive. You're so well known that you are becoming a meme of crying on the kitchen floor. What does that say? Like if the inter whole internet is making a meme out of you crying on the kitchen floor about you doing the same thing over and 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 over for years, that's kind of an established pattern of behavior. Whether it's trolling or not, I don't think it is. Some people have a hard time differentiating between what is trolling with Trisha and what is real. And I can see that. That's a valid criticism. Patricia has announced that she's done with trolling and has been done with trolling for over the last few years. Even more recently, as of literally last week, Trisha made a video sobbing about Ethan Klein from the H3 podcast talking about her online. And Trisha said this. If someone asked me ever, even in my worst days on YouTube, to stop talking about them, I would cease immediately. I'm gonna say, Trisha Paytas, like, you have your own problems. Please stop worrying about mine. Please stop talking about me. You're not a very nice person. You can't say keep my name out of your mouth when your whole career and livelihood is based on social media. But once again, I have to remind you, this is the internet. This is, this is social media. People are allowed to give opinions. And come on, Trish, we know that that is just not true. At least given your track record with lots of other influencers and creators that have actually asked you, hey, could you please stop talking about me? And you continue to do so. But let's focus on a few controversies, big controversies that Trisha has had. I am transgender, female to male. And like straight guys like kind of turn me off. It's very weird. Like I hate like over masculine energy. It sounds so crazy to say out loud, but like I just always thought my life would be easier if I had that part. That if I asserted myself, I wouldn't be a bitch, but I would be like a man. And that's how I always think. When I talk to people, I, I think of myself as being assertive and I think of myself as masculine energy, but because I'm a female and I was born with female 
parts, people think, oh, she's a bitch. Like, I know I did, like, trolled and stuff in the past, and so I don't want people to think this is, like, a trolling video. I've known, like, I've, like, come out as, like, gay before, I've come out as bisexual before, and that's kind of why I have issues in general with just terms in general and labels in general, like male, female, gay, straight, but because I don't know if I would say I'm confused, I would say I'm all of it, boy. And I don't, and I know this is where it's going to get a little scandalous, I don't love pronouns like they and them because that's super confusing, I think personal opinion and I that might be unpopular opinion because I know Sam Smith recently is like I'm a they or something that sounds like plural people and while people think I'm schizophrenic and have multiple personalities like I choose not to identify as multiple personalities so, and then when I'm just low-key and not wearing hair not doing makeup and it's not to say like females need to be girly and always have to do their hair makeup and that what that's what makes a female I'm not saying it that way I'm saying it more of like when I have that masculine male energy in me with the short hair with the pants with my boobs strapped down more with not getting that attention from straight men I think a lot of my attraction, especially to gay men as opposed to straight men, come from the fact that I kind of relate to being a gay man. And I know that sounds crazy and I don't, again, don't want to offend anyone, but that's how I feel. And that's why I have so many gay guy friends because they are out and they are masculine and they have masculine energy. I wanted to be referred to only as T because I didn't know, I didn't... I didn't feel like I identified as a girl. There was one nickname, and it's, it's not even funny. It's not even weird. It's not even, like, clever. They'd be like, Trisha, the man paid us. It sounds like I made that up. Like, it's freaking weird. I didn't really get it. Um, because my natural breasts were very, like, one was uneven. Like, they were hella uneven. And one was really saggy, and one was... I didn't like that at the time. I'm very much about boobs and, like, showing them off. And I identify... With men better. With me, because I don't have, like, that many girlfriends. Like, but... That's why I identify more as like a gay man because I like guys, but I also identify as a guy. Oh, in my head, I feel like I'm a transgender female to male, but also like a drag queen. That's how I, that's kind of how I've like rationalized it in my head. I don't like to be center of attention. I never wear hair and makeup like in my day-to-day. -day. I usually look crazy. Like watch my second channel, I look insane. As far as like girliness goes, like I just never wear makeup. It's just been attracted to guys, but not straight guys. I've always been attracted to gay guys. So maybe I'm a gay man. Like I admire girls' as beauty so much and I just like think girls are so beautiful to like look at. I've always had Penis envy. Yeah. And that's kind of why I have issues in general with just terms in general and labels in general, like male, female, gay, straight. But I don't know if I would say I'm confused. I would say I'm all of it. Because that's super confusing, I think. Personal opinion. I don't think you have to necessarily choose one gender. I think you can be a guy some days, and I think you could be a girl some days. And the problem with identifying as a gay man is that you're not going to be able to fully satisfy yourself by being with a gay man. No, nor am I going to be able to satisfy a partner, like a gay man partner. Let's say I wanted to be male to female, right? Or female to male. Okay. Like, obviously I look like a female now, so if that's not what they're attracted to, they're attract attracted for a mask. The opposite way around, so I don't actually know what that transition's like, but to me, it's like... It's the same thing. It's not different. And I'm saying with me in my mind, I need to be open, and while my name is Trish, like... I didn't have to do my hair in the morning, but it wasn't looked down upon. It wasn't like someone was like, oh my god, your hair, which I have gotten those multiple times. Oops, my butt. I felt like a thick boy, and I kind of like love being a thick boy. I don't know. It's kind of like... So do I think I'm transgender? Yes, a thousand percent. Do I identify with my natural born gender? A thousand percent. Now, one of the reasons this stirred a lot of controversy is a lot of people in the trans community said this was really hurtful and harmful due to the fact that she kind of... Well, she not kind of. She does... She generalizes what it means to be trans. She says a lot of things that would be, in a lot of people's words, harmful to the LGBTQ community, and that straight men can't be feminine. It's just really, really weird. And like, personally, I'm of the belief whether you're gay, straight, trans, whatever, if you want to be masculine, or if you are masculine, or you are feminine, these traits exist whether or not you are or not trans. I mean, I get told all the time that I'm kind of feminine. Especially when I get very excited, I get high-pitched, or I'm called a butch lesbian all of the time on social media. I don't know, I just find this to be really odd, the fact that she makes assumptions based upon masculinity and femininity and putting it in this black and white, you know, only this and only that. I just, I'm not a fan of that, and I think it's kind of stupid to say. Another thing that she mentions is she doesn't want to wear 
makeup and somehow her not wanting to wear makeup every day therefore is another reason why she thinks that she's trans and that she's related to men more than women. And as far as I'm aware, not wanting to wear makeup or wearing makeup or being able to connect with the opposite gender more doesn't necessarily make somebody trans. The people who are struggling with, you know, maybe body issues and their identity, when you water down their identity to simply wearing makeup or not wearing makeup, it's, it's way more complex than that. That's all I'm trying to say. But I'm not here to say she is or isn't trans because that's just not my place. These are just some issues that I see and I can understand why there was so much outrage about this video. I also think it's important to make a differentiation between gender identity and sexual preference. I just want to clarify that I don't think that gender identity is always linked to sexual preference. Does that make sense? I don't even know if I'm making sense with what I'm saying. That's the, the gist of what I, I feel like Trisha is really going ham on. And I really feel that people aren't taking Trisha Paytas seriously because she's not explaining uh, what it means to be trans very well. And a lot of people struggle to come out as trans. And I feel like this could just be seen as a kind of a slap in the face of what it really means to be trans. But hey, what do I know? I don't know. I'm not speaking for any community. This is just my commentary and how I see things. I personally feel that Trisha is not very educated in the area of gender identity. But she comes across as thinking that she is all knowledgeable and she's spreading educational content when the reality is the exact opposite. The next controversy that Trisha Paytas was involved in was where she uploaded a video titled Meet My Alters, a Disassociative Identity Disorder, where she diagnoses herself as having an identity identity disorder. This sparked absolute outrage, and rightfully so, because there's an actual another YouTuber with over a million subscribers who responded to Trisha's video, correcting all of the misinformation that she was spreading about this disorder. If there's one thing that we in the mental health community don't want, it's people like Trisha coming along, spreading misinformation. But if I could like, kind of just pinpoint Trisha in one simple phrase, I personally feel like Trisha Paytas takes the aesthetic of PTSD or DID or whatever new illness or disorder she wants, she sees on the internet, she'll just take that, make it her aesthetic, make it her brand, make it her, her part of her life, and now she's this, that, this, this, that, this. It's not just with disorders, it's with every facet of her life. And that's the one thing that kind of scares me about Trisha, is how all over the place she is with adopting everything that she sees into her life and then she becomes obsessed with that one thing. We've seen this with religion because she's jumped around with how many different religions now. Here's another deleted Trisha Paytas video. There's a lot of them, by the way. Hey guys, what is up? So today I am doing a video which I feel like is a surprise to some, but I feel like once you know, it's probably not that big of a surprise to others. And that is a Meet My Alters video. If you guys don't know, what an alter is, is people that have multiple personalities. I've never been diagnosed with anything. The closest thing that I have self-diagnosed myself, I guess, is multiple personality disorder or disassociative identity disorder or both because there's some differences, there's some similarities, and some people just think they're like all same or all completely different. For me, I consider them quite similar, but I think my disassociating comes differently than in the form of my alters. So I, I always thought I kind of was like taking other people's personalities or borrowing or becoming like my friends or becoming like my boyfriends or becoming around the person I'm around, which I still do to a certain degree. And I feel like Trish, if anything, disassociates the most without disassociating, if that makes sense. So people know me as Trish, like they see me as eccentric, they see me as something different every day. Um, and I feel like, yes, I disassociate, suppose, like I guess you could call it that into Trixie, one of my alters, but in actuality, I disassociate in general by becoming who I'm around. And I feel like that's very noticeable when I have a lot of videos of this recently. Most recently, obviously, Anthony Padilla did this, and I was like, oh shit, like I really wish I knew when they were coming to light. Like, I know. But I digress. Anyways, this creator, Disassoci ID, made a video response to Trisha correcting all of her information, and it sparked a very big, large discussion on the internet. That guy from the old Smosh channel, Anthony, made a whole video talking about spending time with somebody with multi multi multiple different personalities. He says, you can watch my video to learn about disassociative identity disorder from people who actually have DID and actually know what they're talking about. Claiming you have disassociative identity disorder is not cool excuse to mock people in the community and call them crazy. Yeah, Trisha calls them crazy. Now in response to this backlash, I'm sorry, this is getting so itchy. 
In response to this backlash, Trisha thought it would be a great idea to upload another deleted video on her channel. I don't even know the original title, but she posted it very soon after she got the backlash, where she posts, posts proof of her disassociative, dis, dissociative disorder, um, where she's switching on camera for 15 minutes, uh, 10 minutes straight, uh, switching her personalities or alter egos as evidence that the, she has this disorder. Now, I am not a mental health professional. I don't have an ex expertise. <clears throat> Sorry. I don't have an expertise in specifically this field, and I'm usually never one to say this person is faking it. But I'm gonna break my rule. This person is faking it. I'm not gonna address the hate of the last video. I feel like I've already done that. I'm like, your opinions are your opinions, and that's just... Oh, we have to leave it, but, um... So today has been very draining as far as my altars go. T, the protector, is nowhere to be found. In fact, my protector is on my altars and he did not want to come forward. And it's hard for me. It doesn't just switch, but today I caught the switch on camera, which I'll show you at the end to Boulder. But very rarely do I catch the switch on camera but lately i feel like it's been in my mind like why isn't this happening no one's believing me like i don't have a paper that says this so everyone's like oh well then it can't be real oh she can't have traits of that or whatever and so it's been in my mind and i was like it's weird it's like almost like being let's say you have a superpower and you go to like freaking the x-man university but you can't tap into your superpower people are gonna think you're a liar and they're gonna be like, you shouldn't be here, but it really sucks because you know you don't belong in normal school. So you're just like, well, I should be here, but I just can't show it. And I don't, I don't even give a fuck if people call me crazy. Like, fuck, I'm crazy, bitch, you're crazy too. Like, get over it. Like, it's just, girl, bye. Like, this is the internet, like, Okay, you're gonna tell me what I am, who I am, and where I live. No, thank you. No, thank you. Not today. I called myself crazy. Trish calls me crazy. Trixie calls me crazy, but you know it works in our crazy system. Okay? So, like, if you can't get over it, honey, then you have to get over you too, okay? Hungry and thirsty. Trisha Paytas, disorders is not a trend. It's not this little badge of honor that you put on your shoulder because the day you want to wake up and decide that you have PTSD, that you have this and you have that, while you spread more information on something that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't disbelieve that you definitely have some issues that I think needs to be worked out. But something that always struck me odd about Trisha Paytas is I tried to find this video clip and I know it's out there. Maybe somebody can tweet it to me, send it to me, I don't know. But there was a video that Trisha did where she talks about therapy, uh, specifically how she's never with a therapist for very long and she goes to new therapists quite regularly, which by the way, that's not a normal thing unless you're trying to find a specific therapist that works with you. But if you're jumping from 10 to 15, 20 therapists constantly trying to find a new one, it could be that these therapists are not actually enabling your delusions. As somebody who has dated somebody who is delusional and makes things up in their own head, enabling people like Trisha is something that needs to stop. Now, what a lot of people don't know about DID is that when a switch happens, like a, a personality switch, 
or a separate identity, right? When that switch happens, there's a whole different voice. There's different facial expressions. There's whole different body language. Each identity is different in their overall persona. It's the same body, but every little trait that's associated with them is different. That's why it's called what it is. Trisha's sitting there in front of a camera, just like looking around the camera and being like, still talking in the same voice, same mannerisms, same everything, claiming this is her switching her alter egos and this is proof that she has this. It's just like, what are you doing? If you want an actual good YouTube channel with actual educational content on this specific thing, go subscribe to her channel. I couldn't find a copy of her original upload, but this is the name of the video. I'd like to go back and watch it. If anybody has a copy of it, I'd love to see it and watch it just so I can be more educated on this disorder because it's really fascinating to me. And the last thing we need is more people like Trisha stigmatizing it and making it to be laughed at. And Trish having a mood swing or being emotional one day or not wanting to care about your diet or caring about your diet doesn't mean you have disassociative disorder. Trish, at the end of the day, I just don't like people who constantly lie. And in no way do you have to prove to the internet anything about anything. Yet here you are trying so desperately to prove something which you have no diagnosis of because you got severe backlash from it. Also, another thing that happens with DID is that you actually have short-term amnesia and massive gaps of space when you're transitioning into that different personality. I don't know, all in all, it's just very frustrating to see this play out online when it was happening and her response to the situation to upload this proof of switching her personalities and alter egos was just really poor taste, whether it was attempt at trolling, whether it was attempt at being serious, I don't know. I can't figure out anything anymore. Who knows what the truth is? Who knows what the truth isn't? A lot of people wanted me to talk about body enhancements and her surgeries and stuff. And quite frankly, I'm not gonna touch that topic. And I think it's juvenile for anybody to request that I talk about her Botox or what she puts into her body. Like, it's not my business. And quite frankly, I don't give a flying fuck. I'm for anybody doing whatever they want to their body as long as it makes them feel more comfortable, more secure. And if you think that I'm going to mock her getting Botox or having, you know, implants or whatever, uh, that's not gonna happen here. So sorry to disappoint you. But what we will talk about, there's been some highs and lows. They don't call it a journey for nothing, but I'm so proud of how far I've come and how I've done it. With Boom Bot Official, the results for me are always consistent, vegan friendly. Ladies, get on the program stat. And there are two photos here that are very, very, very radically different. Now, do you see a problem here in this advertising of a product? I don't like false advertising, and that is what this is. Secondly, Trisha, if you're being paid to promote a product, which you are, you're supposed to hashtag it with ad or sponsor. Legally, you are supposed to disclose that you are in fact being paid to promote a product whether or not that product is legitimate or not Considering if you go to their website, they have these drink shots and like these gummies Which all they really do is just make it so you don't want to eat I don't really think that these types of things necessarily are good for your body But whatever if they help people and it makes people think that they're losing weight or doing whatever for their body than what, you know, it's not my really place to say you should or shouldn't be taking these, but I will call this out for what it is, and this is blatantly false advertising. You have one photo of you clearly sticking out your stomach, your gut, versus a photo in which either you have lost a lot of weight or you're sucking your stomach in, which either or, I don't care. But the photo is false because you're attributing these two photos to specifically a product that actually didn't do anything. If these types of products really do work, then you do a before and after photo of progress. You know, when people do a photo of like, hey, this is me at 10 days in, this is me at 30 days in, this is me at 60 days in. You know, real products showcasing the actual physical change that they can do to you. But you know, this is not the first rodeo that Trisha has had in regards to products because she also recently launched this year her Elixir. She made a whole music video on it, which was pretty clever of the whole Tom Sweeney vibe. And I'm not a makeup guru, but there are a lot of channels that are, and there's some really good ones. Now, as I was digging into the research side of Trisha Paytas's Elixir, I wanted to see if there was some, you know, issues with this product. And boy, 
did I find some because I stumbled across a video <laughs> by a YouTuber by the name of James Welsh. Now, I had to subscribe to this guy. I'm not even really into beauty guru stuff, but this guy, I have already learned a lot just from watching his videos. I think he's really, really cool. And he made a video on Trisha Paytas' skincare line. I'm just going to let him summarize this. I'm gonna edit his video and condense it very, very short. But given the information that you're about to see and hear, I'd have to be the last man on earth to buy a product for a skincare line from Trisha Paytas. I'm just saying, it seems to be the trend nowadays of influencers making skincare lines and they usually are not very good. Most of them. I've made a mistake in the sense that I bought Trisha Paytas's skincare a while back now. Not just Trisha themselves, but the whole skincare line and the creator, the indie brand behind this line. This is actually in collaboration with, I think the brand is just called Glow Skin Enhancement from who I thought was, okay, this is like, hang on. Who I thought was um, a dermatologist, Charlotte Wilson on her website, she says, is the CEO and founder of Glow Skin Enhancement, uh, providing high quality skincare products for all skin types and conditions. Let's just say I'm glad I haven't put this on my skin yet. They show the products being mixed in a big um, tub, <laughs> which at the time I was like, that's obviously just for show. That's not how they create these products. Saying that, um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure now with what's come to light. Hey guys, my skincare has finally launched and we are here at Glow Skin Enhancement to go look at my little room where it's made and manufactured. And here it is. The Miracle Elixir Collection. And this is the little room where it's all fulfilled and shipped and manufactured. And yeah, I'm really excited for you guys to try it. This is the perfect skincare for any problematic skin type that you have. It really is a miracle. I've been working with Glow Skin Enhancement for months to fix my own skin. So we found this perfect product and it's a whole system. And you just need the system and your skin will look flawless. And I feel like I'm a pretty good attest because my skin used to look like something and now it looks like this. <laughs> Anyways, link in um, the bio. <laughs> And oh my God, the things that have come to light about this brand. First of all, the most important thing is Charlotte Wilson has a kind of like a reality series on her channel, on her YouTube channel, which just kind of talks about stuff. And there are a couple of those videos that are kind of worrying. Um, one is the... The fact that she's got dogs in her practice. Now listen, I'm a dog owner. I love dogs. I love, love dog dogs. But with that in mind, I know how dirty they could be. They eat stuff, they lick stuff. If they're a boy, they probably like to wee everywhere, you know? Ooh, okay, yeah. So first of all, she let this dog into um, her practice. You know, party train? Ah, uh, yeah, he goes on his wee wee pad. Oh, He's a oh my god. Oh lord. Oh my god. Look at this. The dog done shit it in my office. Oh lord. Come Here, in. let me. Come oh in. my god. <laughs> Does he step in it too? No, no, no. You know, that's not good practice. That's not good hygiene, first of all. Where she makes her client, I believe it's the same client actually, sign a waiver to say that they are both under the understanding that she is not an esthetician, she's not a dermatologist, she's just enthusiastic and has a gift for skincare. This waiver here is, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an esthetician, I'm not a dermatologist, but I do have a gift, I have a gift of skin. So you, we both agreeing that you'll allow me to share my gift with you, and by signing, printing, and putting today's date, that's our agreement. It's some doctors that I've been to that uh, haven't been able to get me together. Oh, really? Well, honey, like I said, mine come from God, so I'd rather have God than man any day. I ain't even take credit. Imagine, imagine if I, a skincare enthusiast, a YouTuber, opened a practice and I was just like, well, you know I'm not really, a I'm not licensed to be doing this, but I'm gonna do it because I have a gift. You know, my skin's okay. I can make your skin okay. I'm good at recommending products. Let me work on your skin. <laughs> that is terrifying. That is absolutely 
terrifying to me. That's dangerous. They also made it very hard to find the ingredient list for these products. When it first launched, I couldn't find it. This kind of makes me think that these might be white label products, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. The approval process. So that looks a, a little bit better. I don't know how that has sunscreen in. I'm not saying, I'm not saying they're lying at all, but that is so insanely sheer. I don't know. Something's not right. I completely forgot I have this camera called sunscreener that sees unprotected skin in their words. So it sees exactly where you've applied your sunscreen. This camera is designed specifically to show the invisible UV light. Since sunscreen's job is to absorb a UV light before it hits your skin, it looks dark when you look at it through a sunscreen, whilst unprotected skin appears light. So judging by this sunscreen camera, this isn't a sunscreen, allegedly, in my opinion. Just thoughts. The camera could be faulty just trying to cover my back here oh my god the fact that she's claiming that these products are what saved her skin where she very publicly sees a dermatologist and has a lot of face pills it's all pretty much one big lie she is just the face slapped on a brand <laughs> What a wild ride that was in such a short time. So yeah, I probably would not recommend you buying Trisha Paytas' skin care elixir. But did you know that Trisha Paytas right now, yes, right now, is actually being sued? Yeah, you heard that right. A lot of people are not talking about this, but Trisha Paytas and Nina used to be friends. And Nina was actually the, the thrust, the support, that got Trisha Paytas to start making what is known as a OF. OnlyFans. I have no problem with anybody doing OnlyFans. I have one myself. It's linked down below in the description. But Nina was the inspiration and really pushed Trisha to start an OnlyFans. And then something happened. She promoted her OnlyFans with what is known as a referral link. Now, when you have a referral link, Nina had her referral link set up. So Trisha was promoting OnlyFans. And when people would join OnlyFans, they would use Nina's referral link. And Nina would get a profit, a split of a new member joining the website. This is a really common thing. A lot of websites have referral programs. You get people to join, more users to join, you make money. And in this process, Nina made over $16,000 in referrals through her link through Trisha Paytas. It was kind of like a mutual thing, you know? Somehow, some way, and I'll let Nina explain this. It is official, guys. It is definitely official. The lawsuit uh, with OnlyFans has been officially filed in the UK. It took us some time to be able to find a good lawyer that we knew could handle the case well in the UK. Um, for those of you who don't know what is going on with Trisha Paytas and the OnlyFans lawsuits, there is a video link in the description box as well. And you can go ahead and watch that video. It's about 10 minutes long and it breaks down exactly what happened over a year ago but it is official guys as far as trisha paytas is concerned with the only fans lawsuit that has been filed in the uk it is official um she is now a witness on my case um they're going to find out what her involvement was with the removal of over sixteen thousand dollars out of my referral program so one thing that I can say without going too much into detail is that Trisha Paytas is now going to be fully investigated and her OnlyFans account is going to be under extreme scrutiny. I mean, they're going to dissect her entire OnlyFans account and get to the bottom um, with a full investigation on how it was that um, OnlyFans and Trisha Paytas, what her involvement was in removing over $16,000 out of my referral program. I know that a lot of people didn't think that I was going to follow through with the lawsuit. Trisha Paytas has done a lot of things to a lot of people and has literally gotten away with it. I want you guys to know that I am pursuing this all the way through and everything is going to be... Um, taken care of and I will keep you guys definitely updated. I know that Trisha Paytas hasn't even um, mentioned the fact that she is now involved in a full lawsuit and um, hi I highly doubt that she will even admit or even acknowledge her involvement in what happened to my referral program. Um, I think I've given uh, Trisha Paytas enough time 
to rectify the issue. And I guess she maybe was under the impression, in my personal opinion, maybe she's under the impression of, well, you know, there's no way that she can follow through with this lawsuit because OnlyFans cannot be sued in the USA. Um, and I think that, you know, things are going to be rectified uh, within the next six to eight months. And um, I will keep you guys definitely updated. So Trisha Paytas is a witness in my case. And um, if she hasn't gotten the paperwork, I'm pretty sure she will get it very, very shortly. Then, of course, there is the Frenemies podcast drama. Now, I'm actually not going to go in detail at all with this outside of just recommending these two videos here in which I actually covered the breakup of this podcast on my channel already. I'm not going to repeat or go through the same stuff again. It is linked down below in the description if you would like to see those, reference those. But all in all, H3 Podcasts and Trisha Paytas were part of a one of the biggest podcasts on the internet, and quite frankly, it was one of my guilty pleasures. I loved it. I watched every episode. It was one of my favorite all-time podcasts to watch. The chemistry, just the dialogue, it was fascinating to see. And on all honesty, I thought Trisha was really doing extremely, exceptionally well on that podcast. It brought in a lot of success, brought in a lot of revenue. That solid 5% made a lot of money. But something happened. They broke up. Link down below if you want to watch it. And ever since that breakup of that podcast, Ethan Klein, his wife, and the whole cast of that podcast, and Trisha have kind of been at odds. And there has been an ongoing drama since that has this, the, the podcast has disbanded. It's been really sad in my opinion, and I think that there's been wrong done on both sides as time has went on. Because as of just this last week, as of making this video, Trisha Paytas uploaded another video on her channel talking about the H3 drama with the podcast, The Frenemies, because she just got married to Moses, and Moses is the brother of Ethan's wife, which by the way, I'm just gonna say here, I wish you absolute success in that marriage. I really do, and I mean that. Making this video, um, uh, despite everyone else telling me not to, for like the happiest week. That was like the perfect week. <laughs> Got absolutely stolen from me by Ethan Klein. Over two months ago, I sent a text privately to Ethan and he let them bank them. More than two months ago, three months ago, bank them. Can we just end this, please? The amount of hate that they incite and the danger that they put us in. And everyone they talk about, they know, they see it, they want to turn the subreddit, they know, we tell them, they know, they're aware. And I haven't talked about them for months. You know, I just, I thought it would go away, just video he's made obsessing about me. It always scares me, the backlash I receive from their subreddit and their fans. I, the last thing I said to them was just, can we please stop talking, to which both I got a response from Ethan and Hila saying, no, we can do whatever we want, you don't, we, you, you don't get to tell us what to do. And all I was simply asking, out of pure desperation, for this nightmare to end, because it is straight up bullying. Not only is it straight up bullying, making fun of my parents, my music video, like just all that stuff. It's inciting hate on purpose. Inciting very dangerous hate. I have deleted every video about them. I have not spoken their name once in months. I just wanted it to be over. They were not invited because they could not stop talking, harassing, and obsessing over me, over us. They could not respect boundaries when I just asked them to please stop talking about me. If, if someone asked me ever, even in my worst days on YouTube, to stop talking about them, I would cease immediately. I get it, but now it's been, it's been six months since Frenemies ended, and it's been three months since I begged them to stop calling me an anti-Semit for wearing a yarmulke and doing a TikTok trend that other people did way before me, a dance, to a TikTok trend. And then calling me anti-Semite and saying, F them. He knows. He purposely, he lies all the time. He tried to say, I separated a family. I've always been good with Moses' family. We've talked on the phone. like, And he tries to make it seem that way. When he, him and Hila have the issue. And apparently his mom, who I don't even know. Meanwhile, Ethan can't stop talking about me. Can't stop getting bans and strikes going off on Twitter. On just random people blocking his content. And just being so angry. He couldn't wait. I, there was a clip of him saying, like, I put Trisha's every thumbnail and talk about her in every episode and title if, like, Hila would let me. Like, what? You are have a pregnant wife and a child and you are still obsessed with me and everybody. Like, you just, just, you want to tear people down. It's not about holding people accountable or being funny anymore. It's just, like, I've been keeping to myself and minding my own business. And, and, and it, Moses' family left today and then he makes that video. I set a boundary with him and Hila and asked them to please stop talking about me. And... 
it brought me back to when I had asked Keemstar the same thing and Keemstar said no. And it's this helpless feeling when you're fragile, as a lot of people are, including Ethan himself, when it comes to mental health and stuff like that, when you're fragile and you, and you ask someone and they just won't. And they can't respect boundaries and it just- Don't let him know that he ruined your, your best weekend, I said, but he did. But anyway, Trisha got married to Moses. Um, and she's been uploading videos like every aspect of their wedding on her channel. And this is where I am gonna give a little bit of credence here. I actually do agree with Trisha here that Ethan has been talking about Trisha way too much. Just like any time, almost every podcast, Trisha is always being mentioned and I think that it's it's a little too much in my opinion. I don't care if you cover her every once in a while, but talking about her in almost every episode constantly, Trisha does have a point. Not that Trisha isn't without fault because she does say, if I, if somebody asked me to stop talking about them, I totally would. Yeah, that's bullshit coming from Trisha Paytas' mouth. But in regards to Trisha not talking about Ethan, that is true. Trisha has not spoken about Ethan or the podcast in almost, what, three, four, five months? It's been a while. She's actually surprisingly, shockingly held her end of the bargain of like not talking about Ethan in the podcast anymore. And yet Ethan has continuously, all any chance she gets talks about Trisha constantly. That is the one plus one point I will give Trisha on that. She does make a point. Now her making a plus one point does not negate anything I've said in this video. I need to make that very clear because there's a lot of stupid people on YouTube who think that if I agree with something that Trisha may say or do, 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 or does, you know, that therefore negates what I've said. So no, it doesn't. Wake the fuck up, use your brain, you're not stupid. At least I don't like to think that you're stupid. And the final thing I want to briefly mention in this one's pretty severe, and I'm going to be as, as, as non-descriptive as I can about this, but essentially there was an episode of the Frenemies podcast in which Trisha Paytas made an allegation about a person who had passed away, and this allegation that she made was very, very severe that involved one of abuse. Folks started doing some digging on her allegations towards a particular person who was at her high school, and they found some very big holes and things where she's talked about the same situation and, and the information that she was presenting was very drastically different and skewed and didn't line up, which made some people speculate and believe, is this a re is this is this a false allegation? Did this actually happen? Which resulted in the H3 podcast removing an episode that included Trisha Paytas' allegation. And this sparked a massive outcry from Trisha, which resulted in her uploading a series of videos on Twitter. <laughs> Having an actual breakdown. <laughs> My past. <laughs> How people are accusing me of lying. They don't believe. They don't believe Moses. They believe all victims except for fucking Trisha. No, I'm a fucking liar. And I'm demanding to make a statement. <laughs> I'm just letting everything go. I can see it. I'm so conceited. I said I'm sorry. I said I'm done. I'm so fucking done. If this is not me, anything. It's that I'm fucking done. I will never fucking say shit about anyone. This is life ruining. You are ruining people's lives. Moses' work is getting things. Like he's a fucking rapist. It's a fucking crazy with someone who is who has shown that she's obsessed with me, and I'm just like I can't. I have done a lot of fucked up shit. I have done so much shit, but no one deserves this. If someone asks you to stop talking, I'm just stop talking. They won't stop. And it's not because they believe in whatever. It's, they're, they're, it's, it's literally just because they have a hatred. I'm getting it from you and Eli. And he said, he's like, this is a private chat. I try to call him. I try to call him as I record the call. I'm just, I just don't want him to know the fucking distress that I'm in. And you know what? They're going to do a real. They'll make a whole video about this, put their ads in and their sponsors. For what? What is this for? I don't care if you don't even know who the fuck I am if they didn't know me at all. I am begging for it to end. This is too fucking much. All of it getting brought up again and just... Moses' <laughs> ex is getting tossed. His immigration stops everything. I can't breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe. I tried. I said, please. I said, I would give back every penny I made on front of me. And I mean it. I will write a check. <laughs> I've never felt this. Because they don't care about the truth. They don't 
want to believe anything that we say. They don't care. They literally don't care. They just want. It's just, it's just crazy. They said it's too little, too late. I said it's not. I'm calling the Jews. I'm asking for it to stop. A fucking stop. All of this starts from their entry step right if they can control and monitor. They're posting some about my mom. My dad. And just stop, please. Fucking stop. Why was fucking molested? And everyone is reminding me of that person's name and telling me to apologize. Oh my god. This person. Oh my god. Just falsely. And Moses is so falsely accused. And he's saying shame. Shame on what? Is it believe all victims or believe all victims except for trash? Like, make up your fucking mind. Oh my god. I'm so inside myself. Saying that this individual that she made this allegation hurt her in a horrific way. And then very soon after that, over 1,600, not joking, over 1,600 YouTube videos from Trisha Paytas' channel, she removed. Now, there's a lot of speculation, and I try not to run on speculation, but all I can really say is that I think H3 was correct in revoking or removing that video simply to protect themselves from the family that was being harassed from the allegations that Trisha made, but also things resurfaced during this time. But today I want to talk about how to seduce your teacher. Um, so I was always a little seductress back in the day. Today I had crushes on all my t-shirts. T-shirts? Teachers. Sent me from fourth grade, my fourth grade teacher, Mr. I was in love with. He was a hippie with a ponytail and earring, and I passed out one time, and he carried me to the nurse's office after we had our hepatitis B shots. Mm. I, think he, I think he felt the heat, too. I totally get it. And then we moved on. My next crush was, I want to say, freshman year, Mr. Byron High School. He was the English teacher, but also the gym teacher and wrestling coach, and uh, we had heart rate monitors, and I always was like, I don't know how to get my heart rate monitor on. Could you help me, Mr. Hot, uh, premature gray, but sexy fit tight little body. Then I moved schools to Pecatonica High School, where it was my ultimate teacher crush, Mr. D, who was my sophomore biology teacher. And oh my god, his glasses and his muscles and his talking. Mm -mm -mm. And I would always go see him on my like my breaks, or I'd always like get out of class. And I have to go see Mr. D, left my book in his in his room, and the seduction just started. Now let me just say as a disclaimer that I did not have sex with any of my teachers till after I was out of school and of age or college rather. Uh, I had a college teacher that I had sex with. He was my theater teacher, and uh, it was very easy to seduce him because I had a tight little body, and I was just like. Hey. <laughs> and that was it. So you might have clicked on this video thinking that I was going to give you a bunch of silly tips and make it really funny, but if you actually want to seduce your teacher, there is a few things that you should do. It also doesn't help to have similar interests as the teacher you are interested in. Mr. Uh, was into movies, as was I, so it was really great. We had a kind of a bond over Quentin Tarantino films, but I knew he was a really big fan of like uh, like Robert De Niro and like those kind of things, so I would start renting Robert De Niro movies and talking to him about it. Or if there was a movie he would bring up that he really liked, if I haven't seen it, I was like, oh, I haven't seen it. He's, he would like lend me the DVD, so it gave me like an excuse to come see him. He's like, oh, pick up the DVD after school or something like that. Back in my day, you could close the doors, but I think now I'm pretty sure there's an open door thing where like if a teacher and a student are together, the door has to be open, so no hanky panky there. Um, and I did it with any of the teachers that I mentioned just FYI if they're still teaching. Uh, definitely didn't. Definitely wanted to. Definitely didn't. Uh and I really don't know how to process this. I don't know how to respond to this. I, I, I genuinely don't have commentary outside of saying that I'm confused and slightly disturbed. I don't know what to believe because I don't want to, you know, disregard somebody's experience that may have happened. But at the same time, fault allegations do exist. They do happen. I know because I've lived it. And that's why these types of situations, you really have to be delicate on how you approach it, how you talk about it. But most of all, you don't platform and spread false allegations when there's nothing that's been substantiated that proves that this actually happened. And when you go the deeper you dig, you find out that, you know, there's actually a very high possibility that this person could have lied or has lied based upon their other statements about the same situation. Does that make sense? And in no way am I saying that Trisha didn't experience something when she was in high school. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just making this point is that you have to deal with these types of situations very delicately. And I think Ethan did what the best thing he could do, which was revoke that video, remove it off his channel, given Trisha's past track record of lying about a lot of things. Just because somebody lies about a lot of things doesn't mean that something didn't happen to them. 
but because they've lied so much, it makes it really hard for people to take what they're saying seriously. The boy who cried wolf, you know, it's a, it's one of the, it's a real situation. It's a real thing that happens. And obviously this is kind of speculative, but this was removed off of Reddit very, very quickly. Obviously this is all a text response. And there's really no way to verify how true this is, but I'm just presenting for transparency's sake because there are videos that line up with what this post is saying on her channel. She has made videos in line with this post of saying how she would try to, you know, seduce a teacher, get the teacher's attention in horrible ways, and just like, I, I don't know guys, like, I, I don't know. What do you want me to say to this? I'm definitely gonna bat my eye when, you know, 1600 YouTube videos are all deleted. And I personally believe that those 1600 videos were removed because she didn't want people to look and try to make you know, go back in her videos where she's talked about these types of situations and make connections to see if she's actually being consistent or if they're just filled with more holes that may disprove what she's saying. Do you, does that make sense? I'm not here to disprove what she's saying about this, these allegations. I'm just covering what has been seen online and the things that she has done and said that's corroborative with, you know, other statements she's made in her past videos that she's deleted. That's all. Anyways, folks, there you have it. This has been the Trisha Paytas files. This is definitely not a finished video, meaning that I'm sure more things are going to happen. I know there's some stuff that I left out, but again, I cover what I think is the most relevant in these types of situations. I'm not always going to cover every little mishap that happens with folks. It has to be something that I think is relatively, you know, maybe damaging or potentially dangerous or just irresponsible in general. That's the stuff that I really try to, you know, talk about and care about when I make these X-Files videos. It's going to be the new year relatively soon. 2022 is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to be expanding this X-Files series into the criminal side of YouTube, which I've been wanting to do, and we're going to be covering Jeffrey Dahmer and quite a few other folks in the same sort of style, except we're just not going to talk. I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired of talking about YouTubers. I'm, I'm going to continue to do so, but I want to expand my series to, you know, different areas that could be more educational in the criminal realm side of YouTube. I'd also like to mention that the last two weeks, so after December 24th, I'm having two guest features on this channel. It will not be me. I'm uploading two videos from two different creators who are a lot smaller than me. They are very, very intelligent. They're going to have their own spin and some own of their own commentary on some situations, which I hope you guys give them the time of day and give them your view and give them your watch because I watch them regularly and I think that you should too. I used to do this back in the day where I used to promote smaller channels and allow them to upload a video on my channel to get some more publicity, more views, more subscribers because I know what it's like on YouTube being the small little guy and not having anybody watch you or not having, you know, a lot of people find your channel. I think it's a great way to give back to the community. And plus you get exposed to new creators that have a different opinion and perspective on life and news and commentary. And, and finally, if you like video games, please check out my gaming channel, Repsy Games. It's linked down below in the description. Starting in January, I'm gonna be posting almost weekly on that channel. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers. My goal is to get it partnered by the end of February, which I will also be converting off of Twitch to uh, YouTube streaming because Twitch is just way too censorship right now. I really feel comfortable streaming on that platform. I'm actually quite surprised I haven't been banned on Twitch. So I kind of want to migrate that all over to my gaming channel, Repsy Games which I post gaming stuff and also tutorials on how to set up your streams, which will be posted in the later months. So please open up the description box, expand it, follow me on all my socials, make sure to hit that bell, make sure to like the video, and most of all, leave a comment down below telling me your thoughts on Trisha Paytas and what you think. And I wish you guys happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a happy fucking new year.